We have a lot of projects coming up that we need a lot of different pieces of information for. And one thing we need to tackle is setting up your Raspberry Pi to use your GPIO pins rather than your USB port. Hey everyone, Chris here, and yes, we have a lot of different projects coming up that are fairly complicated. There's lots of different pieces, so we need to chip away at it a little bit. And one configuration I've never done a video on is how to set up your Raspberry Pi pins to use GPIO rather than your USB port to connect up to your 3D printer. It is fairly straightforward, but there's some very specific information that you need to be able to get this done. And it can be useful in a couple of different scenarios when setting it up on your 3D printer. And there's a few different reasons why you might want to do this. So I thought we'd just go over all that today. I'll get you set up with all the information you need to get this done if you need to work that into your project. So let's start out, we'll check out the Raspberry Pi and a few different printer main boards. So here's our Raspberry Pi 4. Now this is gonna be pretty much exactly the same for Pi 4, Pi 3, 0, 2. They should all have the same pinouts and the configurations we're gonna use via the software is gonna be identical. So we're concerned about these pins right here. You have five volt here on the end, right next to it you have five volt. Then you have ground, you have GPIO 14 and GPIO 15. So these four pins here, we're gonna connect them up to our main board. Some main boards, they have a pre-configured cable that will use both of these five volt pins, but most of the time you should be able to get away with just using one. So it's these four pins right here. And this is going to be a UART setup. All you really need to know about that is this pin right here, GPIO 14, that is transmit. The one right next to it, GPIO 15 is receive. You just need to keep those two straight because they have to be flip-flopped when you go over to the main board. Same exact setup if you would like to use your Pi Zero. Five volt, five volt, ground, 14, 15. Either one will work. And on the main board side, this is the SKR2 from Big Tree Tech, but a lot of these boards are gonna have the same kind of pins and we're gonna utilize the ones that would go to your TFT touchscreen. A lot of them have bare pins, like this one does on the SWD pins here, but the SKR2 actually has a connector around them. So these are your TFT pins. Check your pin out for your board, but for the SKR2, your five volt is right here, ground next to that, PA9, PA10, and then a reset pin here on the end. So in other words, five volt, ground, transmit, receive, reset. And that's important, that transmit and receive, because they have to be set up correctly going to the Pi. And then you have boards like this one here. This is the Big Tree Tech Pico. These are designed to be used on the Voron Zero, but they have dedicated pins over here to go directly to your Raspberry Pi. In fact, if you use a Zero, you can mount it right up here on top. You should be able to make either side work, but these Pico boards are designed to be exactly the same size and bolt pattern as a Raspberry Pi. So that gives you a nice, neat, all-in-one package. If you attach the Pi on top, you have your connector right here. You can use it directly with Octoprint, mainsail, fluid, whatever you need to. And this is the case also where you do have two 5-volt lines to give you a little extra current. So something like the Pico comes with an already made cable. It would just go in this row like I explained already just like that. And the power and everything for your Raspberry Pi is gonna be taken care of. And something like your SKR board, if you're using TFT pins, the power and ground are gonna be the same. You can see it on my cable here, but you wanna have that transmit and receive flip-flopped. Notice I have the yellow wire on the board going to the last pin on the GPIO in that connector. That's number 15. And then the green one on the far pin on the main board going into number 14. So transmit on the main board, over to receive on the Pi, transmit on the Pi, over to receive on the main board. That's all you gotta remember. Those two need to be flip-flopped. So the physical setup to get your Raspberry Pi connected to your main board is fairly straightforward. You just have to whip up a quick cable, or you could probably buy a ready-made one. I don't know for sure, but you can find just about anything on Amazon. Or there's a lot of main boards that have a cable like the Pico, and I think that's going to be more common going forward as we integrate more with Raspberry Pi, Octoprint, Clipper, all that kind of good stuff. So we've got that piece. 
Now we need to spin up Octoprint and make sure it works with our 3D printer. And here's our setup. I'm just doing this all on the bench here. It's not actually connected to a printer. I've got our SKR2 Raspberry Pi 4. I put a screen on here because I want to show you a feature here in a second and I'm powered up with a 24 volt power supply. Now one of the biggest advantages of setting up like this to be on the GPIO rather than the USB port controlling your 3D printer is because the power is going to be built in. So using those TFT pins, you have 5 volt and ground. That's going to power up your Pi via this GPIO. Now remember, Raspberry Pis, they're kind of fussy about power, especially the 4. It needs a lot of current. I have successfully done this setup where the Pi was happy with the amount of power it was getting from the TFT pins, but your mileage may vary. Remember, QC on these boards isn't always that great. You might not have the best regulator on here. You might not be getting all the power you need for your Raspberry Pi. And in that case, all you could really do would be pull the power pin and use an external adapter. But hopefully you can get around that. Just be aware of that. If your Raspberry Pi is complaining, it might throttle down your MCU. It might become unpredictable. Make sure you have enough current to power your Pi properly. The 3B would probably need less current and the 0 even less than that. So keep all that in mind. And once we're cabled out, the Raspberry Pi is powered on, Octoprint has booted. We need to do just a little bit of work to the Raspberry Pi out in Linux to make sure the pins are working correctly how we want to use them. You will need to be able to log into your Pi via SSH. I use the PuTTY tool. You can probably use octopi.local if you wish here in PuTTY, or you might have to use your IP. We're going to use the IP for this one. We're connected. Login Pi, default password, Raspberry and we need to make a few edits to some config files. First command we're gonna run is sudo nano forward slash boot forward slash config dot txt. You need your sudo password, which is also Raspberry by default. We're gonna go all the way down to the very bottom of this file. I'm just gonna put in a space and we're gonna do dt overlay equals pi 3 and that's going to be the same for 0, 0, 2, pi 3 and pi 4 dash mini uart dash bt. On the pi 0, 2 they have reported some issues with read and write so they suggest you add an additional line if you have that 0, 2 you'd add dt overlay equals disable dash bt. Essentially with these two commands we are swapping ports used by the GPIO and the internal Bluetooth chip. And if you're having those read write issues disabling Bluetooth here should help out. So we'll go ahead and control X, Y and enter to save. And for good measure you can disable the Bluetooth services. And there's two you want to do, so sudo system ctl, ctl, disable. The first one is hciuart.service. This will keep it from coming up at boot. And then you can bring that command back up, just up arrow. And the second one is Bluetooth dot service. That should help with any errors you might receive as well. Now there's one more file we need to update and that's command line dot text. So sudo nano forward slash boot forward slash cmd line dot txt. And in here all you need to do is take off the console serial. So this first part of this line here, just remove it all the way down until you get to console TTY. Just like that. That's the only change you need to make. Control X, Y, enter to save. And then we can reboot. sudo reboot. And I like to put in now. And when your Pi comes back up, there's one thing we need to add in settings. So just go into settings. Right here in additional serial ports, we need to do forward slash dev, forward slash 
TTY, capital AMA, zero. And we'll save. And then just refresh your browser. That serial port should now be available. There it is right there. Depending on your printer, select your baud rate. Most of the SKR board configs default to 250,000. And we'll hit connect. And if you head over to the terminal, you can see it's connected. We're throwing all kinds of errors because there's nothing hooked up to this board. But we have been successful. Now there is one handy plug-in. If you have a connection like this, or really any printer connected up to a Raspberry Pi, let's go to Settings, go to Plugin Manager, and we'll do Get More. And we're just going to search for IP. And here's the plugin right here, Octoprint-IP on Connect. Let's install that. Once it's installed, we'll go ahead and reload. We'll disconnect, and then go ahead and connect back up. And with that plugin installed, if you have an LCD screen, it's going to put the IP of your Raspberry Pi right on the screen. That is really helpful if you're on a DHCP network where you randomly get assigned an address, your IP can change. So if someday you connect with Octoprint, you can't get connected via that IP, just go to the LCD screen and your IP might be different. So there it is, right there. And to make sure that scenario always works in your connection tab, Make sure you have saved your configuration settings and you auto connect on server startup. That way it's going to make a connection over your printer by default and it will show you that IP. So there's the Octoprint setup if that's what you run on your Raspberry Pi. I know there's a lot of folks out there that run Clipper that use Mainsail or Fluid as a front end to control their machine. But the hardware setup as far as the cable goes, that's going to be exactly the same as Octoprint or any of the other products. I just want to make sure that Fluid and Mainsail are configured the same way down in the Linux part of this install. So let's check those out now. And here's our setup for testing Fluid and Mainsail. We're using the Big Tree Tech Pico board and the same Raspberry Pi 4. Now pay attention to the cable. This is the stock cable that comes with the Pico. Remember we're using five pins over here, but they are the same GPIO pins. We just have the additional five volt line here. But transmit and receive are still 14 and 15 GPIO pins. So it's almost exactly the same. Now, it is important to note, you probably don't want to use 5 volt for anything else when you have a setup like this. You don't want to try to draw juice from the Pi when you're being powered by the board. That's just a disaster waiting to happen. So if you're like this, dedicated to a printer board, just leave 5 volt alone. Don't try to use it for anything else. And a quick note on the Pico. To flash Clipper on this, it does have a Raspberry Pi chip on it. You would have to put a cap, a jumper cap, over these two pins right here, then reset it. You can reset it with the reset button, but that's going to make it available to your USB port on your computer. There's no SD card involved here. You drag and drop it onto the board via USB. We'll see more of both of those here in a few moments. But everything else is the same. I'm using the same 24 volt power supply. And I also wanted to mention Octoprint, Mainsail, and Fluid, I did these all the same way. I went out to the GitHub or their website, got the image file, and then I flashed the image onto an SD card using this Raspberry Pi image tool. I'll leave a link in the description to all of these softwares. But you just choose the OS. I went custom for Mainsail and Fluid, grabbed my image file, chose my SD card, and hit write. You do have to configure your Wi-Fi to use these, but that will be in another video when we talk more about these. I just wanted you to know that these were all built from the stock images. And after we start the Pico, it boots back up and then it powers that Pi. We are able to get to our Fluid dashboard. We're going to start here. And you can see it's unable to connect to Clipper. So the changes we made for Octoprint should be exactly the same for Fluid. So just like we did before, we're going to edit that config file, sudo nano forward slash boot forward slash config dot text txt we'll scroll all the way to the bottom and we're going to enter the same thing dt overlay equals pi3 dash mini uart dash bt remember if you have that 0 2 you might need to disable dash bt as well but we should be okay here. 
So we'll go ahead and control X, Y, enter to save. We can go ahead and disable those services like we did before, sudo system ctl, disable hci uart.service and bluetooth.service. And we need to edit the command line.txt, sudo nano forward slash boot forward slash cmd line dot txt. And just like before, we're going to delete this console equals serial line right to there. And that's good. Control X, Y, enter to save. Now we'll go ahead and reboot. Now the Pi is back up, we're logged back in, and for this video I don't want to go into a lengthy install of, for Clipper, but we will have to do a few things and at least get Clipper flashed onto the board so I can show you how this is going to work. So if you do an ls in the home directory, you should see a Clipper directory, we'll just cd in there. Do an ls again, there's all your files, and from here you should be able to do a make menu config. And from here, we need to enable extra low-level configuration options. Set your microcontroller for the Pico. It is this Raspberry Pi RP2040. And the big one, if you want to use GPIO, you need to set your communication interface, serial on UART0, GPIO1, GPIO0. That's going to make those pins work. Everything else stays default. So you get those set up. If you need to alter them, just hit enter and it's going to give you some options. You can do Q to quit. And once you have that to build your config file to flash to your board, you just do a make. Mine has already been built with those options, so I shouldn't see anything after I do the make. You could do a make clean to redo it if you wanted to, but you're going to see it build if you do your make. I can CD into out and take a look in there. And this Clipper UF2. That's the one we want to use. Now you have to get that over to your computer so we can load it on the board. The easiest way to do that is win SCP. Again, I'm going to show you all the stuff in other videos. But after you get SCP set up, this is your clipper out directory. You can just take that UF2 clipper file and copy it over to your local machine. This is my desktop. And as I mentioned before, the cool part about the Pico is you can just cap these two pins right here and hit reset. Make sure your USB is plugged in. And then you have this directory over here. That's your Pico and you can put your file, the one we just pulled from the Raspberry Pi. Put your file in here. There's our Clipper UF2. We'll just copy it and we'll paste it. And as soon as you paste it, it's going to flash it to the board. You're going to see this share drop and come back. So we'll paste. It's down, go back to Explorer, it's back. That means the flash was successful. Now you flash the board with Clipper. So back to Fluid, we'll take that cap off the board, go ahead and reset one more time. We did a refresh on Fluid. You will need a printer config file. I have a generic printer config I downloaded from Big Tree Tech. I'll show you how to do that on main sail since I already have this one done. So I'll show you here in a, a little bit later in the video. But for the main sail config, we've already flashed Clipper to the board, so we won't have to do this again. So we'll just firmware restart and we'll restart Clipper. We're getting a bunch of errors because there's nothing plugged into this board, no thermistors or anything. But if you go to home, you'll see it's reporting the temperatures in the negative. So we know that we are connected to our printer board over to the Raspberry Pi. Everything is working as expected over that GPIO. One thing I wanted to touch on that probably didn't make a whole lot of sense in this configuration, I will touch on it again when we do the main sail one, is how you configure the serial port. If you're used to configuring Clipper from command line, you'd have to list your device and then get that big long MCU number and paste it in your configuration. If you do an ls forward slash dev, since we're using the GPIO, we're not going to do that serial 0, serial 1. We're just going to use the device 
TTY AMA0. So you don't have to list that big serial number like you do when you use the USB port. And to use that in your config, we'll jump back to Fluid. Just go to your configuration, edit your printer config, scroll down to MCU, and just make sure you have these two lines. Your serial is going to use that device, TTY AMA0, and your restart method will be command. So it can restart the software as needed. So you don't need this big long number, like in this example up here. And when you have that updated, just go ahead and save and restart. So there's the fluid setup. There's a little bit to do there, but hopefully that's somewhat straightforward. And main sales should be almost exactly the same, but let's run through it real quick just to make sure. Here we are in main sale. Our Pico board already has the configuration for using the GPIO pins. Big Tree Tech has those configurations for you, by the way. They're available out here on the GitHub. This one here is for USB. This one is for UART mode like we're doing here with GPIO pins. I showed you how to create one. I just did a quick make and selected the options, but these are out here if you want to use them. And I didn't really show you the printer config for the Pico board, so let's go ahead and do that now, just as an extra step. Since this is a brand new install of Mainsail, Fluid and Mainsail are almost the same. There's no printer.cfg. Out here in their GitHub, they have a default config file, .cfg right here. You can just grab that. I'm just gonna copy the raw contents. So that's everything down here. You can just create a file. You can upload it however you want to upload it. But I'm gonna do printer.cfg. Open that up, and I'm gonna paste the raw contents in. Big Tree Tech already has it correct in here, so you can use UART, but make sure, again, as I showed before, that this part is set up correctly. Then you can go ahead and save and restart if you made any changes. And let's jump back to PuTTY, because we do have to make those same changes in SSH. We'll open up a new session, Pi, Raspberry. The default user ID and password should be the same for all of these. Again, sudo nano forward slash boot forward slash config dot txt. If you scroll all the way down to the bottom, it looks like in main sale, they have all the settings already there that you need. This DT overlay to disable Bluetooth, as well as this overlay Pi 3 down here. This should work for a lot of different scenarios. Uh, I did misspell the one when we did fluid. I forgot the A, so I had to go back and correct that. But this one looks like it's already all there. So we should be able to just exit, no changes. And let's verify command line is set up correctly. sudo nano forward slash boot forward slash cmd line dot txt. And it is. They've already removed that baud rate and that serial command like in the other config. So we should be good to go. I didn't have to make any changes to main sale. And no matter what screen you're on, if you come over here to the power button and do a firmware restart, it will restart it. You can see that it comes up. We've got negative values, but then it shuts it down automatically because of those negative values because we don't have anything plugged into the board. But that does tell us we are communicating with the board via GPIO. So we have completed the tasks that we wanted to get done. So it looks to me main sale is just a little bit ahead of the game as far as the settings to connect up via UART mode as far as the config files go, because they were already there and they worked out of the box. No changes. So if you want the easy route, if you're using Clipper, main sales your go-to. Again, we'll do some deep dives in other videos, but for this video, we have successfully connected up via GPIO with Octoprint, main sale, and Fluid. So there we go. Everything you need to know about hooking up your 3D printer main board to your Raspberry Pi using the GPIO pins. Now, this is just one piece to the puzzle. We need to get this one out of the way before we can move on to other projects. But this setup can be pretty advantageous for a lot of different reasons, especially if you can get away with using the mainboard power to power up your Pi, because then you don't have to have that power adapter for the Pi. That just makes it a lot simpler to use. So, hopefully you found this helpful. This was kind of a quick one, but that is it for today, and I'll see you really soon on the next one.